the Gospel of Pope Honorius. The Gospel of Pope Honorius, also known as the Grimoire of Pope Honorius, is a notorious grimoire attributed to Pope Honorius III, who reigned from 1216 to 1227. The Gospel of Pope Honorius is unique in its attempt to merge Christianity with magic. It contains a series of prayers, exorcisms, and invocations that are ostensibly Christian in nature, but are used for magical purposes. The rituals often invoke the names of God, Jesus Christ, and various angels, alongside more traditional magical incantations. This blending of Christian elements with occult practices is one of the defining features of the grimoire. The book is primarily a manual for performing various magical operations, including summoning and commanding spirits, exercising demons, and gaining supernatural knowledge and power. It includes instructions for creating magical tools, performing rituals, and invoking divine and angelic assistance for protection and guidance. The text positions itself as a powerful resource for clergy and laypeople alike to harness spiritual power for practical and protective purposes. The Gospel of Pope Honorius faced significant opposition and condemnation from the Church due to its content, which many considered blasphemous and heretical. The book's integration of magical practices with Christian rites was seen as a perversion of the faith, and its use could lead to accusations of heresy and witchcraft. The claims of papal authorship further exacerbated the controversy, as it implied that a high-ranking church authority endorsed these magical practices. The book's claim of being written by Pope Honorius III is generally regarded as a pseudonymous effort to lend credibility and authority to its contents. By attributing the text to a pope, the authors aim to legitimize the practice of magic within a Christian framework, suggesting that such knowledge was divinely sanctioned. However, historical evidence strongly suggests that the actual Pope Honorius III had no connection to the grimoire. The Gospel of Pope Honorius is a notable example of how magical and religious traditions can intersect and influence each other. By incorporating Christian prayers, saints, and divine names into its rituals, the book creates a unique fusion of faith and magic. The Book of Abramelin the Book of Abramamlin is a famous grimoire and mystical text attributed to the Abraham von Worms, a Jewish mage and scholar believed to have lived in the 14th or 15th century. The text is presented as a letter from Abraham to his son, detailing his journey to Egypt and his discovery of the magical knowledge imparted by the mage Abramelin. The book was written around the early 15th century and is structured in three parts. The central focus is on a complex and rigorous magical system that culminates in contacting one's holy guardian angel, a spiritual entity meant to provide divine guidance and protection. The text describes the holy guardian angel as a divine guide who can grant wisdom and knowledge. Once this connection is established, the magician can also summon and bind various demons, compelling them to perform tasks. This duality of angelic guidance and demonic servitude is a significant theme in the grimoire. The Book of Abramelin has faced various challenges and controversies over the centuries, its ritualistic and magical content led to its suppression by religious authorities who viewed it as heretical and dangerous. The demanding nature of the Abramelin operation also meant that it was accessible only to a dedicated few, further shrouding it in mystery. The Book of the Law, also known as Liber Alabama Vel Legis, is a central text in the religious philosophy of Thelema. It was written by the British occultist Aleister Crowley in 1904. The book is said to have been dictated to Crowley by a non-corporeal entity named Awas who is described as a messenger of the Egyptian god Horus. One of the most distinctive features of the Book of the Law is its claim of divine dictation. According to Crowley, Awas communicated the text over three days in April 1904, while he and his wife, Rose Edith Kelly, were staying in Cairo. Crowley described Awas as his holy guardian angel and an emissary of the gods. The book consists of three chapters, each supposedly dictated on one of the three consecutive days. It outlines the core tenets of Thelema, a new religious movement founded by Crowley. The central theme of Thelema is encapsulated in the phrase, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. This statement is interpreted to mean that individuals should seek and follow their true will, which is a higher purpose or path aligned with the divine order. The book also introduces several key concepts and deities of Thelema, including Nuit, Hedit, and Ra Hor Kut, representing different aspects of the universe and consciousness. Nuit is the infinite sky goddess. Hedit is the point of view and experience and Ray Hor Kuit is the child god representing a new era. The Book of the Law has been a source of significant controversy since its publication. Its radical ideas about individual will, morality, and the rejection of traditional religious and societal norms challenged conventional beliefs. Crowley's association with the text and his notorious reputation as the wickedest man in the world further fueled public outrage and misunderstanding. The book's emphasis on personal freedom and self-discovery while liberating to some, was seen by others as an endorsement of selfishness and hedonism. The Grand Grimoire The Grand Grimoire, also known as Le Dragon Rouge, the Red Dragon, 
is one of the most infamous and enigmatic grimoires in the history of occult literature. Its origins are somewhat murky, with the book believed to have been written sometime in the 17th or 18th century. The exact author is unknown, adding to its mystique, but it is often attributed to someone operating under the pseudonym Antonio Veneciana del Rabina. The Grand Grimoire is notable for its explicit instructions on summoning and making pacts with demonic entities, particularly the devil or one of his chief demons. The book is divided into two main parts. The first part contains the Grand Grimoire itself, which details various spells, rituals, and invocations, while the second part, sometimes called the Sanctum Regnum or True Clavicles of Solomon, offers more in-depth procedures for calling upon demonic forces. At its core, the Grand Grimoire preaches the idea of harnessing demonic power to achieve one's desires, whether they be wealth, power, or knowledge. The Grimoire provides specific rituals for summoning demons, creating magical tools, and conducting rituals to bind these entities to the will of the practitioner. The most infamous aspect of the book is the detailed process for making a pact with a demon, promising one's soul in exchange for temporal gains. The Grand Grimoire has been condemned and suppressed by religious authorities due to its overt promotion of demonic pacts and black magic. Its reputation for being a manual of dark arts has led to its association with witchcraft and Satanism. Throughout history, possession or use of the book could result in severe punishment, including accusations of heresy or witchcraft. Despite, or perhaps because of, its dark reputation, the Grand Grimoire has had a lasting impact on occult traditions. It is often cited in modern discussions of demonology and black magic, influencing contemporary occultists and magicians who explore the darker aspects of magical practice. The book's themes of power through demonic assistance have resonated in popular culture, inspiring numerous stories, films, and other media about deals with the devil. The Grand Grimoire is considered a rare and valuable text. Original copies are exceedingly scarce and according to rumors, it's being kept hidden in the Vatican. Jesus the Magician Jesus the Magician, Charlatan or Son of God is a book written by Morton Smith, a scholar of ancient history and early Christianity. Published in 1978, the book presents a provocative thesis that Jesus was a magician whose miracles and healing acts were consistent with those of other magicians in antiquity. Smith meticulously compares the miracles attributed to Jesus with those performed by other known magicians and wonder workers of his time. He highlights similarities in techniques, such as the use of spittle for healing blindness and invoking divine names during exorcisms. Smith argues that Jesus' actions fit within the broader context of magical practices in the ancient world. The book sparked significant controversy, particularly among conservative Christian scholars and believers who viewed it as an affront to their faith. By portraying Jesus as a magician, Smith challenged the traditional understanding of Jesus as the unique Son of God, leading to accusations that he was undermining the theological foundations of Christianity. The book was condemned for challenging traditional Christian beliefs by depicting Jesus as a magician rather than the divine Son of God. The Book of Moses The Book of Moses, also known as Sefer Moshi or Sefer Moses, is a mystical text often associated with Jewish Kabbalistic traditions. Its origins are somewhat obscure, but it is believed to have been written or compiled between the 14th and 16th centuries, possibly in Europe. The Book of Moses is known for its focus on practical Kabbalah, which includes the use of divine names, angelic invocations, and magical rites. It is said to contain powerful spells and instructions for achieving various supernatural feats, such as protection from harm, healing, and gaining insight into divine mysteries. The text is often linked with the legendary figure of Moses, attributing its knowledge to the biblical prophet's supposed divine revelations. It also said to contain spells like the one Moses used to part the Red Sea. The book's magical content and its use of divine names and invocations led to significant controversy. Religious authorities, particularly within Orthodox Judaism, viewed the text with suspicion and often condemned its use as heretical. The practical Kabbalistic practices it described were seen as potentially dangerous and contrary to the more theologically and philosophically oriented aspects of traditional Kabbalah. The Cloud of Unknowing This is a spiritual guide written by an anonymous English monk in the late 14th century. This mystical text focuses on contemplative prayer and the direct experience of God, emphasizing the necessity of giving up intellectual reasoning to achieve true spiritual union. The book advocates for a method of prayer that involves placing all thoughts and concepts beneath the cloud of forgetting while focusing on God's presence, which is hidden behind a cloud of unknowing. It encourages readers to seek God through love and humility, rather than through intellectual understanding. The book faced challenges and skepticism, particularly from those who viewed its mystical approach as potentially heretical or at odds with the more dogmatic aspects of medieval Christianity. Its emphasis on personal spiritual experience aligns it with the values of free thinkers. Although it is firmly rooted in Christian tradition, and its emphasis on personal experience over established doctrine made it controversial. 
At various times, its unconventional approach to spirituality led to censorship and banning by religious authorities wary of its mystical content, Picatrix. The Picatrix, also known as Gayat al-Hakim, the goal of the wise, is an influential grimoire on astrological magic. It was originally written in Arabic in the 11th century and later translated into Latin in the 13th century. The book is attributed to an Andalusian mystic and scholar, although the exact authorship remains uncertain. Picatrix is renowned for its detailed instructions on astrological magic, including the creation of talismans, invoking planetary spirits, and conducting rituals to harness the powers of the stars. It also involves spells that can make one transform to any animal form. It draws from a wide range of sources, including Greek, Persian, and Indian texts, making it a comprehensive compilation of magical knowledge. The book faced condemnation from religious authorities due to its overt use of magic, which was often seen as heretical and associated with sorcery. Its circulation was often restricted, and those found in possession of it could face severe penalties, including accusations of witchcraft. Despite historical suppression, Picatrix has had a lasting impact on Western esotericism. It influenced Renaissance magicians and scholars, such as Marsilio Ficino and Cornelius Agrippa, and continues to be studied by modern occultists.